that what we need the people from across the street to realize that we want a hand up, not a hand out. We want the people across the street to realize that if we put in the work, we want our money for the work that we put in. So that's why I'm in this fight for $15. Not for me, but for the children. For the, the older folks who can't get Medicaid, for the home health care workers who have to go in and take care of our elderly. Now all I have to say is, they stand together, forward together, not one step back. And I'm tired of the people across the street taking the fight to North Carolina workers. So let's stand up and fight for what's right and make them people across the street realize that we're here for the long haul, not the short run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Angelina Echeverria from El Pueblo, and I'm here with Jorge Ramos, and we're going to talk about how the legislative session is affecting immigrant communities. The good, the bad, and the complicated. We are fortunate to actually have a good bill in the Senate. SB 463 would give any young person who attends high school in North Carolina for three years and either graduates or gets his or her GED to qualify for resident tuition status. Yes. As you talk with legislators this session, please be sure to thank Senator Fletcher Hartzell for taking the lead on introducing this important piece of legislation. And as you'll hear from Jorge, this bill will make a huge difference on thousands of immigrant families throughout the state who just want an equal chance for their kids to go to college. In contrast to this good bill, there's been a lot of bad this legislative session. As we work to increase access for health services for immigrant communities, we're concerned about bills like HB 465, which would create unnecessary barriers for women seeking health care. Immigrant women already face enough challenges when navigating the health care system and do not need legislators interfering with their ability to make the best decisions for themselves and their families. We're, we're concerned about bills like HB 318, which would put an unnecessary burden on small employers by making them subject to E-Verify. It's sad that we still have representatives who are willing to make the lives of all North Carolinians more difficult in their quest to target and vilify immigrants. And now for the complicated. Currently, thousands of people throughout the state are prohibited from getting a license due to their immigration status. As you'll hear from Jorge, lack of access to driver's licenses results in members of our communities living in fear, unsure if their next trip to school, to work, or to the doctor's office will result in uh, getting more tickets that they can't afford to pay, or in the worst care, uh, uh, scenario, in deportation. HB 328, sponsored by Representative Harry Warren, would address this issue by creating a restricted driving permit that would be accessible to undocumented residents. At the same time, immigrants would be fingerprinted, would be subject to a criminal background check, the permits would clearly display people's immigration status, and folks driving without a license would find their vehicles subject to impoundment. Give All right. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. We're trying to make sure our speakers get on the issues get in because we've got some time to strain. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Who's that? You'll have some more chance to speak inside the building, but it's important. Who's next? Terry. Hey, Terry. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. My name is Tara Romano, and I'm president of North Carolina Women United. I'm proud to be working with so many women across North Carolina who know we deserve better than the harmful and spiteful legislation we've seen recently. As of the 2013 session, we're hearing a lot of talk from legislators about women's rights and safety and the protection of families. It was empty rhetoric then, and it's empty rhetoric now. Instead, we're seeing policies based on the belief that women can't be trusted to make our own decisions. Supporters of House Bill 465 say it protects a woman's choice, unless, she, of course, she makes a choice that they consider to be a wrong choice, and then she's forced to wait 72 hours to make a different choice. This bill is an insult to women, and as always, the burdens of increased restrictions will fall hardest on poor women, women of color, immigrant women, young women, and rural women. There are a number of introduced bills that actually would support all women and families in North Carolina. If we truly want to protect families in North Carolina, we must pass legislation that will increase the minimum wage, reinstate the earned income tax credit, provide paid sick and family
family leave and guarantee equal pay for equal work. If we really care about women's health, let's expand Medicaid and get toxic chemicals out of our environment. If we really care about women's safety, pass laws that will make it easier for victims to get out of abusive marriages and establish effective campus sexual policy. Sexual assault policy. If we really trust women's voices to protect us from on-the-job discrimination, write us into the U.S. Constitution and bring back our voting rights. All of these are actual bills that have been introduced this session, many of which are going nowhere, as our lawmakers instead ram through bills that restrict our family and marriage choices and are designed to shame and judge us for our very lives. The only people we see being protected by these bills being passed so quickly are those who want to uphold the current racist, sexist, homophobic, and xenophobic status quo. That's right. Alice Walker said the most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. But we are here today to claim our power, the power of lifting up together. Thank you. Use your mouth and give it up. Now we got an announcement. The first group that was been arrested have been released. Not all of them, but a group of them are right here. Give my hand. Give my hand. All right. All right. All right. Next speaker. Give me a scan. It's my name. You're coming, Justice Chair for the NAACP. We want to talk about two things uh, quickly here. We want to support the to prohibit discriminatory profiling. We want to support House Bill 193 and, and Senate Bill 613. And it's to prohibit the use of discriminatory profiling by law enforcement officers in the presence of the duties. We want to amend the types of information required to be reported by certain law enforcement agencies concerning traffic law enforcement. We want to require certain law enforcement agencies to report certain information concerning homicides to require law enforcement officers to receive annual training and training concerning discriminatory profiling, authorize the use of citizens review boards to investigate or review allegations of certain police misconduct, and to, and, and to require that certain training be provided to members of neighborhood crime watch programs established by counties and cities. Yeah. Now for our legislature, yes. now for our governor, our governor still has refused to issue pardons to Henry McCollum and his brother Leon Brown. They were released and found innocent after doing 31 years in prison. September of 2014, they were exonerated, and yet he still refuses to give them a pardon. Pardon them. Pardon them. Pardon them. Pardon them. Brother McCollum was 19 and his brother was 15. And they received only $45 when they left prison, and they're struggling right now. They need a pardon. If I, if I was if I was hearing what ESPN would say when something crazy happened in sports, they would say, "Come on, man, 